I think this country was born out of a desire by a whole lot of people to create a better world for themselves and the world around them. The icons of innovation, Alexander Bell, Thomas Edison, the Wright brothers, people that had big ideas that were willing to risk a lot to create inventions that would make the world a better place. We have a liftoff, liftoff on Apollo 11. We succeeded. And in the last generation or two, due to the great success of our parents, grandparents, great-grandparents, we now live in a culture where kids can spend a whole lot of time with leisure. The icons for their generation all seem to be coming from the world of sports and entertainment. And that's fine. I love sports and entertainment. I have a baseball field with lights on it for night games in my backyard. I got a football field, I got a tennis court, I got a basketball court. But I understand they're for fun. More than 25 years ago, serious people were seeing a dramatic, dangerous, scary decline in the number of kids studying math and science and projecting forward that we as a country could lose our preeminence in the world in these critical skills. I'm an inventor. We look at the same problems everybody else looks at, but as an inventor, we see them differently. It's a culture problem. So I suddenly had this idea. The sports model has been brilliantly developed to attract all kids. We could take the model of sports and use it to take all kids and turn them into zealots for something that could change their lives and change the future of the world. And here you're seeing what happened. It's kind of like an addiction, hearing that sound. You just want to hear it again and again and again. One mistake in this game, you could be eliminated. 23 years ago, the first competition began with a couple of dozen teams in a New Hampshire high school gym. This is going to be the biggest year ever. It's being played in an NFL stadium where the Rams play. I guess it's kind of like Tetris. Every individual action is going to like fit in with the next one. When I'm driving the robot, I have to have a game plan and know exactly what I'm going to do. Back out, back out! You can't go into a competition underestimating what you're going up against. Just expect a lot of thrills. Four stack, four stack, four stack. Heads up, heads up. Every oh, round, you can get one step closer. Oh, we're doing. You're hey, at This competition was an emotional roller coaster that has only been exceeded by the birth of my children. details and that's what we need to be able to finish this off okay because we're here we can do this the autonomous they're right there they need to be against this wall right do they drive into over to here wait okay. out we had some guys don't freak out don't freak out don't freak out again breathe it in nice yeah. and relaxed yeah. breathe out you guys know how to do this yep. driver I do not participate in the debate about whether creativity can be taught, but I absolutely believe one can create an environment in which creativity is celebrated. I had been running a design competition at MIT for about 20 years before I met Dean, and Dean had founded the organization first, and he and I together co-founded the first robotics competition, which was patterned after the stuff that we had been doing at MIT. The first blush first is a robotics competition. People are told to build something to accomplish a task, but it's really a lot more than that. First is much more than robots. In fact, the robot is kind of the campfire around which the tribe gathers, and the design and build task is a vehicle for learning about science and technology, and in the process, learning about self and society. So it's not STEM, 
It's STEM augmented with creative thinking, critical thinking, leadership, a whole bunch of things that are really important to making sure that kids have a good shot at getting in the game so that they can have a meaningful life. FIRST is filled with lots of leaders. FIRST is a community of leaders. Congratulations to all the students, parents, mentors, and teachers at this year's FIRST National Robotics Championship. Just make sure you keep your robots peaceful. FIRST has a wonderful international footprint. They're all characterized by the same sort of excitement. FIRST is a powerful diplomatic tool. Where are you guys from? Pakistan. FIRST LEGO League is the broadest program. It's all over the place. We have what we call the progression of programs. We realized that we need to get these kids early on because by the time they get to high school, a lot of them have decided what they do or, or don't want to do. So we started the Junior FIRST LEGO League program, which is six to eight. We built a space museum because people didn't have enough knowledge about our solar system. It's a little different for them. It's more of an expo. They don't get involved as much in the competition side of it. I am the coach of the Ruler Girls. We'd like to empower them, and we're just trying to get our girls involved in STEM. They just progress from program to program, as the Boy Scouts or the Girl Scouts would do. We built it again to make it more sturdy and to build it to make it actually work. And then we saw a need for the middle school kids because there was a gap between the first Lego League and the first robotics competition. So we came up with the first tech challenge, which is middle school and high school. How the first tech challenge season starts is in September, we have the kickoff where they release a game. And so everybody begins building the robot. And then after that, if you advance from qualifiers, you move on to the regionals. Then from there, the world championships. I'm really passionate about helping the younger generation learn about engineering. I mean, there's so much more prepared for college and studying engineering in college than I was because I learned about it in college. We are at an event honoring women. This was great because the girls were able to come in between matches, and so they could come and spend a few minutes and then go back, you know, to their competition or their other obligations. Where I work, there's 500 employees. Only but five of us are female engineers. But don't ever let the fact that you're a female discourage you from going into engineering. What you guys are learning now with FTC and if you go into FRC program gives you such an advantage compared to everybody else that goes to college for engineering. Women in technology are really important. Science teaches us that women have a more natural genetic empathy response. So if we want good products made by ethical people, we want more women in technology and they just keep going on and on and on until the first robotics competition, which is a high school program. This year's first robotics competition is a little different than many of our competitions in the past. Teams are separated from one another on opposite ends of the field, and they're manipulating things that are much more like an industrial assembly process. This is a game called Recycle Rush. Recycle Rush. Recycle Rush. It's played by two alliances of three robots each on each side of the field. Their purpose is to stack totes on scoring platforms, put recycling containers on top of those totes, and then put pool noodles, which we refer to as litter, inside the containers to multiply their points in a match. They have a 15-second autonomous period where the robots are running just on programming and then an additional two minutes and 15 seconds of driver control mode. This competition is broken up into eight divisions. It's going to be really tough, and we have a lot of great teams out here. I am a mechanical member and operator of FRC Team 1477, Texas Torque. Oh, Torque! Team 1671, the Buchanan Bird Brains from Columbus, California. We're oh, Team 254, the Cheesy Poops. Oh. We work in Silicon Valley. We're lucky to have all these people who can help our team. I'm part of Team 118, the Robonauts. I work at NASA. I build robots we're trying to send to the moon. Pretty cool, right? Who are we? Hey!
Team Rock! Team Rock! Team Rock! Team Rock! Yep. Right now we are at the World Championship for Robotics and this is my fourth year on the team and I'm really excited because we'll be here for Team Rush and we're actually a robotics team out of Clarkson, Michigan. My mom and dad have been coaches ever since the team started. My older brother Troy actually got a first scholarship because he had the four years on the team. And my little brother Cody is now on the team. I'm the team leader for Team 27. And I'm really a math teacher at a high school and have partnered with engineers. And we've been able to create this incredible program. We have 32 students from Clarkson High School who are on the team. We've got about one third girls, two thirds guys. And so we have a really good mix of students. I do this because 19 years ago, a friend of mine said, Kyle, you need to do this because it's going to change America. I have seen students who thought that they wanted to be a social studies teacher and ended up going to MIT instead. And their freshman year in college, they're raising cancer cells so that we can find a cure for cancer. Would it just be like similar? No, they're congruent. They're congruent. The evolution I've seen in my own personal children has been amazing. It's our life. If a kid had a dad as a football coach, he knows in August dad's gone until Thanksgiving. In our house, we know that mom and dad are the coaches of this team, and they just come with us. We had a chassis sub team, which is in charge of the lower part of the robot with the driving. We have a bug chassis. They focus on the sticks in our autonomous mode to get the containers from the middle. And then our object collection device, they focus on the gripper to actually grab the containers. So I'm gonna drip the sensor in the front with this piece of paper. And it'll automatically close on it and bring it back up. The unique part about our team this year is that every year for the past 18 years, we've always said, oh my gosh, we have to do everything. And this year we said, we want to focus on one thing, and our goal this year was being a capper. Other people call them canister grabbers or robbers. So this is level zero, one, two, three, four, five, and six. I think we're going to do really well. At the Michigan State Championships, we were finalists, and that was just getting started off with the season. So hopefully, this time we'll get paired with someone that's really good at stacking. We can complement them really well with our capping. Take a deep <laughs> breath, guys. Ready to breathe it in? Breathe it out. Right now, we're going to run Auton first 15 seconds of the match, the robot does a pre-programmed motion. For us, it's going to grab the cans, pull them back to our side. Three, two, one, run. That time runs out zero all. Drivers take control. Definitely nervous just because it's my freshman year. Grab it, But I try to stay calm. I am the human player for our drive team. My job is to grab the litter and send them into the field over the human player wall. Go. Just 10 seconds remain now on the match. Yeah. 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 We're at Texas Torque World Headquarters in the Woodlands, Texas. They just use kind of semi-arbitrary measurements for it. Yeah. I also don't know why the holes are that size. That's where we ask them, why did they make them the size that they did? Or why are they located where they are? And have it redone. 
My name is Scott Ripito. I'm the robotics instructional coach for Conra ISD. The trophy up front is from winning the world championship in 2013. Uh, <laughs> pretty heavy. My degree is in aerospace engineering, so I'd, I'd always planned on being an aerospace engineer, mostly because airplanes were cool. I was about a year and a half away from graduation, and I wasn't really enjoying what I was doing. And so I decided to become a physics teacher in January of 84. We have robots going all the way back to 2010. This is Sarge. This is from the 2011 game, which was Logomotion. This robot is from 2012. This is Velociraptor. This was a fun game because it was three on three basketball. Down here, this robot, this is Rev One. This is from last year's game. 1437, that's Texas Tour. This is the 2013 robot. This is the robot that we won the world championship with. Since then, we've been doing pretty well. And this is Apogee, robot for the current 2015 game. What we do here is, well, our slogan is, we build futures one robot at a time. I really think that's what we do. On January 3rd, we all met here. We met upstairs and we watch a video. It's called The Game Reveal. We watch a video that describes what this year's game is about. We try to figure out like what kind of robots we're gonna see on the field. A lot of times there's multiple ways to score, so you wanna figure out what's the easiest way to score points. And we just start prototyping, and that kind of drives the design of the robot, and then we start catting. We have a couple of sponsors that make parts for us. All the sheet metal is cut and bent for us, but the rest of it we make in-house. So once the robot's done, electronics team finishes that up. My name is Caroline, and I lead of the electronics sub-team. We wire the motors. Anytime you see wires or these tubes and the lights, that's us, the battery. We build a practice field. We have driving practice all the time. My name is Connor Smith. I'm the robot operator, and this is my third year on the mechanical sub-team. The driver, it's their job to perform well and represent the team's hard work over the past build season. So it's basically up to us to bring to fruition what we've spent so long and worked so hard on. This right here is the driver's station. So it's just a simple laptop with two Xbox controllers. And whenever I push buttons, the screen lights up. It's all fun and games at first, but then when it actually gets down to crunch time, we are competing against teams from around the world and across the state. The way it works is that after you play 10 qualification matches, that determines your final seed. But as you can see, there's seven different matches going on in parallel with each other. It's pretty crazy out here. They're right now setting up the uh, arms for our autonomous mode. And the robot's going to be running the Toucan Auto this round. They've got a chance to put up over 200 points. So that'd be a good score. Drivers behind the line. Torque! Torque! What's the matter? Look at that arm. Two seconds. Okay. Ooh. What happened? Just run with it. Don't worry too much about the arm, because we can fix it, OK? Stack. Okay, easy, easy, easy. Easy, easy, guys. Easy. Oh, no. Pull it up. Pull it up. Go, come on. If it falls, it falls. Go, go. OK, go. All right, don't worry about it. Get another one. Okay, we're good. Just put it on the end there. Get the can. We got time. Just don't panic, okay? 15, 14. We can't get it. Nope. 176. That's good. We couldn't move as well because our arm, arm came out and got stuck. Get out of there. Get out of there.
The competition here at the World Championship is always super intense. Cody, what are you doing? We're all family. It's good and bad. Make a six tech, for God's sakes. So you have the best teams in the world all coming together, trying to be the world champion. The potentiometer on our stinger arm yes. was loose before we went into the match. We have to execute, because we're here, we can do this. About almost 11 years ago, this freshman kid, he was involved in Lego League. When he graduated from eighth grade, he came to Buchanan High School and he wanted to keep going. So he said, I want to start a robotics team here. And I said, well, I'm, you know, I'm really busy. I'm really busy. He goes, don't worry, Mr. Lake, this won't take any time at all. All I need you to do is sign paperwork and stuff. I said, okay. Our second year robot was so bad, our robot was dead on the field seven out of 10 qualifying matches. In one of those qualifying matches, it actually caught on fire on the field. Our coach, Andrew Neighbors, was a freshman that year. My name is Andrew Neighbors. I'm the coach of the Buchanan Bird Brains FRC Team 1671. Patrick, can you come over here and help grab this uh, board? That's it, that's it. Oh. We're the underdog. We started getting parts from junkyards and spare parts that dads or people may have had at home. For the key, uh, chain. Just it's just what it is. I mean, we didn't have anything where we started from, so if you want to get to that level, then you're going to take your team and you're going to work to get there. Uh, ship the yeah. Oh, neutral or? My name is Juan Cortez. I'm a Mexican. My mom is a nurse, my dad is a carpenter, and I have three other siblings, and so every one of my siblings, as they were born, I feel we got more and more opportunities to go to better and better schools, and I was able to come here to join this team. I joined the team with big aspirations, and I feel like through hard work and dedication can get you a, a lot of places. Because I came in here, you know, looking at fabrication and electronics, looking at that, and I'm now the fabrication leader of the team, and I, uh, I'm a base driver on the robot. I've always wondered, you know, so many kids on this team are so great. I mean, do we attract great kids, or do we take kids and make them great? But I think we take kids who are, they're pretty good, but we give them a set of experiences that lets them be great, you know, lets them find the greatness within, so, and they all have it. Check for clear path on the ramp and under the bar. Make sure the ramp isn't stuck on the bar. Right now what they're doing is we call it our systems checkup, making sure we have everything that we know can fail locked in. An analogy with football, we're kind of like a mid-major. We want to play with the big dogs, you know, we, we want to be uh, among the, the elite teams and we work very hard and it's but it's very very hard to do those elite teams are amazing we are we're at team 2 by 4 the cheesy poops uh -oh. Last year was one of our most successful years. We came to the World Championships where after a long and tough tournament, we were World Championships for the second time in our team history. Team 254 was founded about 1998. They're based out of San Jose, California. We're lucky in that we work in Silicon Valley and we're able to recruit software engineers, mechanical engineers, controls engineers, and they may not necessarily be able to get at a different school that didn't have that same demographic. Hey, the robot this year is called Deadlift. Every year we name it after a Decepticon. It's optimized, right? We've iterated almost a dozen times. We started with something that kind of worked, and we made little tweaks here, changed the geometry, changed the friction material of the wheels, changed the gear ratios to make it as fast and efficient as possible. There's one, there's two, there's three, there's four, there's five for the looking for one. Well, we just got four six stacks on our match. This would probably be our fifth or sixth time total, although that is the first time we've done it at championships so far. 
I actually got into robots through my brother. He was the operator of the team before me. He's four years older, so when he left the team, I joined the team. A little bit of a legacy there. Drivers behind the line. We like striving for excellence. We like having the best performing robot, the best performing strategy, a mechanism that we design that's better than everybody else. All right, we got it. You ready? There you go. It's a level of competitiveness and just a spirit of striving for excellence. Slow, go. All right, there we go. Go get that one, go get that one. Just drop it right here, right here. No, we're gonna go over it? Okay. Okay, I got you, I got you. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Why'd that happen? I don't know, I have no idea. I have no idea. Hit the can and stack it. It's 10 seconds, man. You're gonna take your time. Eight seconds, seven, six. Five, four, open, three, open, open. two, push it forward. What were you guys taking your time with? That I was I was waiting for him to go more right onto there. it. That is worthless. Yeah. I was it's waiting for him to drive just over knock more. it over to get the damn can on. Okay. Yeah. Why did it happen though? What happened? Wait. I wouldn't have ever driven over. I would have set the stack here. If you want to do four, you don't have time to go and swing around ever. Okay. You, when you do that, you basically commit to three, and then you're done. We know we can do better, and it's not necessarily we want to be better than you, but we want to have something that's better than anything we've created before. We're very laser focused on making sure we can execute the strategy to the best of our abilities. I'm Mason Marquis, I'm 28 years old, and I work for the NASA Johnson Space Center. I build robots that go to space. Next generation rovers that might drive on Mars and carry astronauts around the surface, humanoid robots that can do maintenance on the space station, and I'm the drive coach for the Robonauts. The Robonauts are a high school robotics team. It's a partnership between the NASA Johnson Space Center and Clear Creek Independent School District. We meet in historic Building 9 where astronauts train for their missions up to space and an incredible robotics laboratory. We've been doing this for so long that we've really built up an amazing program, amazing facility. It's quite the operation here, if you can't tell already. Personally, this program has changed everything for me. I mean, to think back where I was 15 years ago, I always kind of thought I wanted to be an inventor maybe, build stuff, but I didn't know really what engineering was. I had done some robotics competitions in middle school, thought it was fun, thought I would keep going with it. And then I started doing FIRST Robotics in 2002 when I was a freshman in high school. I joined the Robonauts just kind of on a whim. Tension, elevation, it's recoil. Coming out here and working with real engineers and getting to see what their daily life was like and kind of being introduced to all these concepts and seeing the fun side of engineering early on, it got me hooked. I mean, it really changed the direction I wanted to go and taught me what I wanted to do with my life. And I did an internship here at NASA and just loved it so much. I got offered a full-time job, started working, and started mentoring the team that I was a part of when I was in high school, the Robonauts. The clear parts are the guards. Okay. We have old robots that I worked on whenever I was a high school student over here. There's an incredible amount of history. A lot of people have come through the program. I'm just one of the many who have been a part of this team and gone on to do amazing things in engineering. A lot of people think that it's just about the robots, but it, it's really, the robots are just the way we express everything we do in the program. There's a lot of brainstorming, problem solving, teamwork, all, all that stuff adds up to a great robot. So you know, Mason, this is new code and a couple of the underlying classes changed. Moving forward into the tote. Try to reset the pincers. Pincers are reset. These machines are almost like a child to me. I, I know that's weird. Watch the can, watch the can, watch the can. Wait. Okay. In engineering, you start with nothing and just the detail that goes into every part of this robot. It makes you feel like the robot is really yours. 
You know exactly how to pick up a can, how a tote's going to react when the wheel touches it. One day we had almost an hour long argument. About an hour long argument. About which can we should have grabbed in one of our practice matches. <laughs> Who's right? Me. Me. Oh I no, I was right. I was right. Yeah, so we're, we're about to have another one, but we'll do that off camera. <laughs> Really, what it comes down to is we just both know that we're both really passionate about what we're trying to strive for, getting that world championship. Do you agree? Yeah, <laughs> definitely. It's the first and time. I... <laughs> we want to win our division. It's great. We get a trophy. We get a gold medal for that. But we want to play on one field we call Einstein. I've been part of the team for four years. All right, let's bring it in. Seeing all of these people for maybe the last time, all dressed up, I'm gonna miss it so much. We're gonna do Einstein. Einstein! 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 Coming to a first championship is walking into 20,000 incredibly excited young people. There are eight different fields and divisions on the floor of the dome. The way it works is that after you play 10 qualification matches, that determines your final seed, and the top eight get to pick who they want to be on their alliance for eliminations. We do a lot of scouting. We have objective data and metrics that we take on every single team. We have kids with iPads up in the stands, and everything teams are doing, they're recording the data. Certain robots complement others naturally a little bit better. So we get to look at all the robots in our division and decide which one is going to play best with us. For our alliance, we're lucky to have Team 973, the gray bots from Atascadero, California. That's our first pick. Frankly, I woke up in the morning thinking we were not going to even get picked. Spirits weren't too high uh, during that morning. You know, we thought we were going to go home for sure. 23 robots have been picked at this point, and we still haven't been picked. Now it's 118's turn to pick the third robot to join their alliance, and they pick us. So we got them on our alliance. We know that they were good to make three sacks every match. I saw her sitting down, and I'm thinking, oh my god, this is a really good alliance. 50% of the teams are gone in two matches. They only get to play two matches. We've made some changes on the robot, and we're relying a little bit on luck, but we had luck in 2013 when we won. We had luck in 2014 when we advanced to Einstein again. Be careful, and autonomous, make sure you don't cross the line. Good luck, let's have a really good match. Thank you. After 19 years, I've been so close, so many years, to being on what they call Einstein, which is the grand finale. It would be wonderful to be on Einstein. Each year, I say my prayers, I cross my fingers, we play our hardest, and may I guess the best totes fall. Can you do it again? Bring it up. All right. Nice and easy. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. Someone left one of our controllers in the pit, and there was a third one in there that I assumed would have worked, because why else would it be in there? So I plugged that in, but it turns out it was wrong. I, I really feel like even if I was here, this would have been largely unavoidable. This is just it, it should be in your, too many dominoes falling into the wrong your, place at the wrong no, no, time. No, 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 no. Where was this? In this, in here. Why? So what happened is we, we made a mistake that we shouldn't have made. We had the wrong controller hooked up to the driver's station. The robot wasn't operating. Should never have had that control anywhere near the driver's station because it doesn't work with it. So uh, it's unfortunate. The kids have worked really hard, and I, I don't want that to be what keeps them from advancing. You know, I'd rather have it be we play a good hard match against somebody and they beat us. This is a learning experience for the students, learning experience for me. So. You know, those things happen. I... It puts us in third 
right now, so who knows? We're tied for second, so it's not bad. It's not bad. We've got to get ready for the next one. We go in with a game plan, just like you would on a football team. You have a you know playbook. You take a play from that book. You execute it as best as you can, and then make adjustments on the fly. Just take your time. Just go slow. Everything's slow. Slow and steady. No rush. Three, two, one, go. There we go. They got the end zone. Yeah, I feel pretty confident. I feel like we can make it to Einstein. Remember, stay foot off the wall. Damn it, dude. Chris, take your time, dude. Watch out for them. Watch out. Wait, wait. You're good. You're good. What are we doing after this? You're gonna get another stack for Brandon, right in front of you. Tell me one. Take your time. Go. Watch out for the Brandon. Take your time. Take your time. I need time. You're good. Stop. Right. Keep going. Back up. Back up. Watch for nine seven three. They've got six seconds left to go. Four three. Watch out. Watch for nine seven three. No. No. six tacks up we were in good shape and we we're just trying to place one last six set down at the at very end of the match trying to rush it in between other stacks and uh, we didn't quite drop it right that actually tipped over knocking over another stack and on top of that one of the cans bounced out of the field causing us to get uh, two fouls for six points each that's like 160 points or something why were you rushing it wasn't worth it I, I know I know it was, bad, it was a bad call bad right. call it's fine. don't worry about it Dude, it's fine. Don't worry about it. That was a tough break. Yeah, I'm so sorry. It's all good. So what does that mean? Oh, uh, that means that's it. This is the year. The people, the alliance that we're actually uh, tying for right now just lost both of hands, which is crucial for them to win. You know, we do enjoy this spot. Being the underdogs, yeah. And we are the underdogs going into this. It's very reminiscent of last year. We made it to this point last year, and after three matches, we fought really hard. And we just barely lost by about 10 points. And so it's my senior year. It really hits home for me. I really hope we can make it to Einstein this year. Did you guys test this? Yep. Yeah, we're good. Do it once for me. OK. You good? Stop 
We need to keep going. We don't give up in the middle. I didn't know what to do. You no, just go out and you just I start grabbing them. I can't grab those though. Next time, pluck on the outside, grab the next one. Pluck the next one, grab the next one. Pluck the next one. How do you know? Because no. That stack is not going to count. Okay, it is not fully stack. supported. Yeah, but look at their score otherwise, and all the noodles that are over there. You never know, Cody. We got to wait. I've known Kyle for a long time. She was my math teacher all throughout high school. I was on the team from 2001 to 2004 as a student, and it's what really introduced me to the whole engineering world. And I loved it so much, and it's now my career. Let's find out who won this match. Do we have a champion yet, or do we have a rubber match? Blue, blue, blue. And our champion is the Red Alliance. Congratulations to our number two Red Alliance. We got beat with the can burglar, uh, which was disappointing because I think we probably could have beat him. Um, what have shoves, could have. It's over. It's another year. Well Score played. Very nice. Alliance. Our second place finalist. They were all great guys. Guys. Congratulations. Gentlemen, congratulations. Take it for Galileo. Thank you. Thank you all so right. Much. These guys are good, and, and they're going to have an incredible uh, run ahead of them because there is some unbelievable competition that they're going to face. Nice job. <laughs> yeah. Jared. Nice job. Hey, you. I'm getting a little emotional now because it's over. It's been five weeks of competition, and um, I love these kids. I have, uh, we had senior speeches last night, and, um, you know, they're going to go out and they're going to change this world, and I know that I had a part of it, and I think that that's the most important thing. I'm going to miss these kids. First team 118 hails from League City, Texas. They are the Robonauts. Everyone else is done playing. So all the people in the arena come and watch Einstein go down. It is the spectacle. It is the biggest event of the season. From Clovis, California, they're the Buchanan Bird Brain. It's a whole team effort. We're one of the three teams, and we're just making sure that we finish our part. We are in the semifinals right now of the highest level. We won our division, and we're looking to get to the finals and hopefully take the crown for world champion. Here we are in the semifinal match, trying to make it to that ultimate top two teams. We knew that it was going to be us or the alliance of 148 and 1114 on the other side of the field who was going to advance out of this. We were in third place, and we were up against a team that was in second place. And if we didn't switch places with them, we were not going to the finals. I was doing the astronaut's prayer through all of our matches. Drivers behind the line. The astronaut's prayer is this. Please, God, don't let me screw up. I think the vocabulary is a little different, but, but you get the idea. Rush! The match starts. Things are going well. Our strategy is just going to be play our game, get our points, and try to get us at a high enough average to get into the finals. Up, run! And then our software problem creeps up on us, and our robot actually goes into lockup mode. We feel like that's the season. But I look up, our robot recovered from the software problem. 40 seconds, 40 seconds. 118 and 678, they had a strategy that was so beautiful, it was like a choreographed dance. It was a little scary at times, because we knew if we messed this up, it's going to be our fault. Don't move, no. It's no, working with their no. human player. Two, one. That'll do it for semifinal six. 12 last second points scored for Blue. The referees will get you our two finalists for Einstein. How many counting? Not enough. They got the Auton bonus, and that's going to hurt us here. At the end of the match, I'm convinced that they outscored us, so we didn't have a chance to advance. Even if we did beat them, I didn't think we beat them by enough points. 
We were just looking at the field, counting, thinking, oh my gosh, did we do enough? Mason, the 118 mentor, had come up to us and told us, you know, I, I, the math doesn't check out. I, I, think, yeah. we, I think we officially lost. And I, I just beginning to get yourself to accept that is just the worst feeling in the world. And just the anticipation of waiting for the results to come up was very suspenseful. There was a long pause as the referees added up the scores. I'm sure they wanted to get it right. They knew that this was going to be a high profile decision. And then it happened. It came up. 240 for red, 210 for blue. kids are emotional about their robots is the same reason they're emotional when they play other sports. Rush! Einstein finals underway. They're emotional about anything that's part of an experience in life. Right, right, what? Stop! Don't freak out, don't freak out. And humans will only compete in the unlimited class in one sport. This one, you think that football player is really big and really tough? Put an elephant on the field. You think that track star is fast? Put a gazelle out there. The only sport in which humans will ever compete in the unlimited class is solving problems using the tools of engineering. Good job, boys. Good job. Oh one, more. one more. Best out of three. Two minutes and 30 seconds away. These kids inspire me. 118, let's go. We still win this, no problem. Don't worry about that. These mentors that give the most valuable thing they have, their time and judgment. Wait, 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 let's go. Because they know that by doing that, they might change the course of what these kids are gonna do with their lives. I came into this program as you know the shy kid who didn't really want to do much. And you know, I'm leaving here knowing I definitely want to do mechanical engineering. 55 seconds, so much time. Make it pretty. Since we now know that active learning is much more effective than traditional lecture. The people that are still hanging on to the traditional lecture model need to give it up. I'm going to Duke University studying computer science. Central Michigan University, and I'm studying architecture. Chemical engineering at Texas A&M University. University of Michigan, and I'm going to be studying engineering. I want to be a rock scientist. All we had to do was execute. We were, at that point, just felt like nothing could stop us. Two seconds, one second, this one is over. Oh my god. Oh my god. Amazing. Uh, we've worked so hard for so long. We just won Einstein. I can't believe we did it. So happy. Yeah. Yeah. Robot was driving backwards the entire match. I could fight it the whole time. Uh, Look at all those people up there watching. Oh and they didn't even crack under all that pressure. It's amazing. I'm inspired that the first community, which is now hundreds of thousands of volunteers, has created this most incredible, harmonious family of people that are doing the right thing for the right reason in a world where mostly the news tells you all the ugly, bad side of humanity, and here you're seeing the best of the best of humanity.